Hi, today we are interviewing Amy Jane, CPA. Amy is a founder and CEO at Amy Jane Chartered Professional Accountant, headquartered in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. The firm was established by Amy Jane Lunoff, a designated accountant since 2004 with a reputation for quality work. Amy has over 20 years of experience working in the industry, government, not-for-profit, and public practice. In addition, she has 10 years of experience giving back to her vocation through academia, through instructing auditing and accounting courses at Sask Polytechnic and the CPA Western School of Business. Today, Amy Jane Chartered Professional has two team members with Integrity, with plans to recruit another four soon. Amy Jane Chartered Professional Accountant is a licensed accounting firm registered with CPA Saskatchewan, permitted to offer services to the public in all areas of expertise for the accounting profession, including assurance, financial accounting, management and management accounting, finance and taxation. Hi everyone, this is Sean Perrick from Integrity. Today we have with us a special guest from Saskatchewan, Canada. She is a CPA and today she is here in Ahmedabad, India to visit our office and meet their staff members. She is Amy Jane and she is a CPA. She started her practice about three years ago. She is helping her clients by providing accounting and consulting services. She provides financial statement services tax planning and estate planning. So today we are going to talk to her about her career, how she got into practice, how she started with offshoring, how she, uh, how is the experience going with offshoring. So hi Jamie, welcome, welcome to first to India. Yes. And uh, let me ask you this, uh, before I jump to your career, before, I, before, before our viewers know more about you, how is the first experience landing in India? Yeah, it's great and you know, thank you very much for the opportunity. I, I think uh, perhaps I did things a little bit backwards. I took a little bit of pleasure before work and I had the opportunity to go to some of the older cities in India such as Agra and uh, got to see you know, a lot of the historic sites from the 16th and 17th century. And Let me tell you, when I arrived in Ahmedabad, I was just, uh, just amazed with how modern and vibrant and youthful the city is and when I came to the office uh, I could feel the same energy and so it's just been really great to be here. Yep. I want to compliment you about your fashion skills. You are matching your outfit with your, you know, your specs. Well, in today's Zoom world, I also, I'm also wearing a Blu-ray glasses so in this Zoom world when, you know, your other accessories are not being visible I think this is a special yeah, <laughs> thing sure. that uh, should be, you know, be used. But yeah, uh, so uh, how did you decide to visit? You know, was this the special visit you wanted to meet the staff member, see our office, see the environment, or why did you plan this visit? I mean, you know, um, it's been about a year since I decided to pursue offshore resourcing, and you know, I'm sure we'll get to, to the reasons why in a minute. But um, I had. Uh, you know, someone locally who was who was planning to visit, and I saw just in terms of the time frame before tax season, a really good opportunity to invest in understanding uh, my team, how they work, and really, you know, stepping into their world and understanding, uh, you know, what their daily life is like and what it's like here. I rely on them a lot now, and in one year uh, of only working with them, I just really can't imagine how my firm would. Uh, succeed and particularly with COVID is we're all you know hopefully approaching the end of uh, a lot of the restrictions yeah. in the pandemic uh, but I really just wanted an opportunity and so a lot of the restrictions have lifted in terms of where I live and so it was a good opportunity to like I said step into their world and, and I really wanted to invest a little bit into the relationship because I see big opportunities for my firm going forward as a result of offshore resourcing. So yeah, we will jump into that a little later, but before we do that, I'd like to uh, know more about you. I know you shared a little bit about yourself yesterday and we had a long chat, but, but how did accounting occur to you, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and you, how did you, know, you transition to being an entrepreneur? Uh, so if you can just share that a little journey about you. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I've been doing accounting for over 20 years. Uh, I haven't quite found the fountain of youth, but uh, I, I work at it. <laughs> um, 
So I really, I'm really passionate about accounting and I've worked in various industries, public practice for the government and I think particularly, you know, when I started having uh, children and just looking for opportunities to have more balance and management of my time. Now, that wasn't necessarily the case at the, you know, first onset of starting <laughs> the firm because as anybody knows, yes, I've absolutely. worked in public practice, but I really, you know, I had good opportunities in working for larger firms, but I... I felt like uh, I could offer something that maybe larger firms couldn't and I could also pursue my dreams in terms of continuing to keep up with technical accounting and and I think that accounting uh, is even you know more so important in terms of it really is the language of business and mm -hmm. you know being a trusted advisor to clients and helping them make decisions and so instead of just focusing on one business we have an opportunity to work with clients and uh, we succeed when they succeed right yep so, uh, so how did then you know you transition to entrepreneurship after you know working for maybe 16, 17 years with different firms and, and large firms you mentioned, and you mentioned that you wanted to bring that financial independence and freedom to your life after having kids, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, do you think today after having started that probably what you know initially you might have felt that it was not the right decision because there are you know you are building up your business you have clients which are demanding you have deadlines and you are all all by yourself you know so how did that that phase term you know how tell me something about that phase you know the first two three years yes honestly i'm going to tell you that it was a lot of uh hard work and faith you know um like any entrepreneur entrepreneur knows you open the door and uh, if the people come, you know, they come, but you don't really know what to expect. And so I would say the first couple of years was a lot of trial and error. And really, you know, you can't uh, learn until you take a chance. And, you know, there was many things that I could have done better, but uh, had I known what I known then, I wouldn't have learned the lesson that I needed to. And so at the onset, it was a lot of hard work, really heavy lifting in terms of, you know, uh, being able to establish the proper systems, processes, um, how I would be able to interact with clients, how I would be able to <clears throat> meet deadlines, trying the traditional approach that I had seen when I worked for large firms in terms of, you know, the structure of duties, reception, assistant, and, you know, all those things kind of took me away from my end goal of really wanting to focus on providing good service to clients. And so there was a lot of that additional admin and management. And so, uh, I'm going to tell you there were some trying years, but I won't say I'm through it, but I feel like I learned a lot of hard lessons that I needed to learn in order to get to where I am right now. And then probably offshoring entered your life, integrity entered your life. Yeah. So I, let's, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think I mentioned to you when we had an opportunity to speak yesterday, it really was by chance. Uh, I had tried hiring in the local market and I tried with recruitment agencies. <clears throat> I work in a smaller center and um, I had an email in my inbox and I think it just happened. It actually was in my spam folder and I was cleaning it out and happened we to We spam a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I think it happened to be how it was worded and I was like, you know, what can it hurt to give this person a, an opportunity? And so uh, I spoke to Chris Riviera, one oh, of the crazy, uh, yeah. uh, other people in your firm and uh, we arranged a call and he, you know, really opened my eyes in terms of the things that are available. And I really liked the opportunity that it wasn't a major commitment in terms of I could try it out and there was a lot of flexibility in terms of staff selection and as anybody who operates a smaller firm knows that there's some significant challenges in terms of you know finding specialized resources training onboarding you know in addition to spending a lot of time working with clients and reviewing files Absolutely. you know when you have that turnover and so um, he really you know kind of gave me the assurance that there was some ways around that and so I took a chance and I'm telling you it's been about a year and what a great year it has been and a great time to have moved to offshore resourcing particularly with the challenges that people are facing all over the world with uh, you know social distancing restrictions um, actually my business has improved and I'm really thankful for that leap of faith that I took many years ago yeah absolutely so let, let's just understand from you so you jumped into the world of offshoring taking a leap of faith 
uh, let's just try it out. Although you were not able to find the right talent that you were looking for, I think there was uh, in your team on shore you had a gentleman, uh, Hitesh, yeah. who happened to be originally from India. Yeah. So I think he was one of the convincing factor as well for you that probably he can help you integrate. You know, he can help your offshore team integrate with your. That was one of the plus points that you had. Uh, so, so how did this transition kind of start? What kind of training? What kind of onboarding that you did? What are those, you know, things that you did that has helped you in kind of scaling this team in, in, in you know, in this world uh, where, you know, a lot of delegation is required. You need to review the task. You need to, you know, make them understand how they are doing, if they are doing wrong. So what, what how did this happen? It's, I'm sure it would not be like, you know, they did everything correct. No, yeah, it doesn't sure, happen no, like that. No, not at all. Okay. But, but, so it has to be not just a good staff, but a good, uh, you know, supervisor, a good team leader, good leader who is working together. So you guys have worked as one team and that's probably had a little, you know, whatever little success we had, that's the kind of reason be behind it. So my, my question to you is, uh, when you did this, what all happened? You think that probably have uh, kind of, you know, probably would have helped you in building what you have built right now? Yeah, sure. Well, as you mentioned, uh, Hitesh, you know, the area that I live, there aren't a lot of Indian people. And so, um, you know, he had recently moved from India, was doing some studies in Canada and was looking for some experience. And, uh, you know, we kind of hit it off and I gave him, I, 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 I didn't commit to him. I said, you know, I'm going to give you some small tasks to do and try you out because I, I didn't have much success uh, recruiting in the local market. And he was able to, you know, turn work around very quickly had very high like data analytical mathematical skills and so there are many things that you can train people for but if people don't understand and recognize very quickly that things don't make sense and to ask the next question as you know you know uh, when we're when we're providing services to clients we're selling our knowledge and our time yes. so when the time goes through the roof uh, you know you're not going to recover and that's going to hit your bottom line and so when I was able to see the type of uh, work that he was doing, I asked him a little bit more about India and where he was from and you know, we often joke now that uh, people from uh, Gujarati uh, are uh, <laughs> born born with mathematics and, and understanding this and I do see that, you know, a high aptitude in terms of understanding information and whether it correlates. So, uh, you know, to further answer your question, I think that gave me the confidence in terms of, you know, th there are people out there that do have good technical skills and so I started to really look at my processes and, I, and this was about the time I was you know getting into my third year of more trying to stabilize my firm and map out some of my workflows and some of the routine processes and I had to really you know be mindful about when do I need to step back and when do I need to delegate and, and check and so I think uh, it's not just a flip a switch and all of a sudden you have a a uh, resource halfway across the world that's yes, going to absolutely. do what you need to. You need to actually, it gives a chance for self-reflection from a firm perspective in terms of what duties of high value do I need to do and what things can I delegate to others and that they can manage if they have the proper structure in place. And so I think I think at that point in time it was it was really good opportunity to, as I said, self-evaluate in terms of my workflow and the processes and from start to finish you know when a file comes in at what point in time do different activities need to take place so yeah for for uh, thank you for the clarity but for the benefit of some of the canadian cpas who happens to be our client or probably looking forward to offshoring there is one question that obviously comes in is uh, what kind of task that you probably started with and eventually kind of these team is doing for you especially smaller firms like yours you know because competing with larger firms you need that ammunition and knowledge and skills some way offshoring is complementing those smaller firms by providing necessary capacity and the skill set so would like to learn from you uh, when you started what were the tasks that you started with first and eventually what all tasks your team is oh, doing sure. right now? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Well, I think, you know, uh, similar to even my approach with Hitesh is, uh, first of all, giving, you know, smaller tasks in terms of bookkeeping, summarizing information, taking information from source documents that are in a digital format and compiling them. And one of the things that I would say, you know, the team has been very skilled at and more so than, you know, many other uh, people that I may have uh, had working for me is like, 
you know, using pivot tables, using a lot of the built-in technology to analyze the data for what it's necessary, whether it's a journal entry, whether it's doing bookkeeping. So some of those more smaller tasks in terms of compiling information, let me tell you, uh, at the onset, they turned around work so quickly that I was like, okay, they're ready to move faster <laughs> than I am. So what am I going to do next? And so, you know, then I moved to bookkeeping and getting them to manage a monthly cycle for, for clients. Okay, you know, this is great. And then I seen the opportunity to actually expand with resources here and move to not just bookkeeping type of work, but over to assurance work in terms of, you know, compilations, um, assistance on review engagements, tax preparation. And so my firm, you know, I use a lot of the best practice software in terms of, um, you know, Walters Kluwer with CCHI firm, Caseware, these have all moved to cloud-based. And so it was pretty much, you know, get them on board in terms of the software. And, um, and then they were able to move to the next level. And so now they're doing, you know, majority of those types of tasks. And it was, it was a little bit of a gradual process maybe more so for me just in terms of being able to make sure I had the review processes in place and also understand their capabilities. So you took one step at a time yeah. and gradually kind of ramped up. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that, that's a great approach. Uh, well, uh, one more thing I would like to ask is, for example, uh, now today you have visited our office here in, in, you know, in India. You were already working with them onshore. Uh, what difference you see? I mean, you have seen a work environment here Sometimes, you know, a lot of accountants are very apprehensive that I'm sending information offshore and, you know, what these people are doing in some remote part of the world. So these kind of concerns often, and, and these are valid concerns, you know, when you are dealing with client-sensitive information, it is very, very important you work with the right partner. So uh, what were your thoughts before, you know, uh, working or starting offshoring? What are your thoughts now? And, and, and now you have seen our offices and we are sitting here. Yeah, what, sure. what, what, how, how things have transitioned? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I'm going to be really honest with you. In, in a matter of a week or however long from the time I left the airport to made my way to this part of the country, uh, my thoughts have changed quite a bit because, as I mentioned to you, I took a little bit of time for pleasure when I first arrived and went to some of the tourist attractions and some of the older cities where the infrastructure and the face of India is a lot different than, than here, I would suggest. And, you know, it's like that in any country. And so when I when I left, I felt like I had a really, a pretty good rapport with the employees. Um, you know, did spend a little bit of time in terms of understanding them. You know, oftentimes, just like employees at the office, significant events happen, whether it's marriage, birthdays, yes. you know, so you, you ask people how they're doing yes, yes. on a day-to-day -day basis, not just, you know, did you get yes. the work done? So when, when I arrived here and, and honestly, you know, came to the office and, uh, m much like the city, just uh, it's a very youthful atmosphere, uh, very positive, um, and I feel that people are actually, and I felt this before I left, but even more so now, people are really like enthused to do the work and they like the intellectual challenge. And for me, I'm a person that uh, I really appreciate when people take pride in their work. I think most accountants yes, do, absolutely. you know, pay attention to the details. And so I can see why, because it's not just the particular people on my team, I can feel that energy from you know, the team as a whole, I've had a chance to tour your building here and uh, I see that people are really proud to work for this this company and uh, Thank you. they also, um, you know, take, take time for pleasure and there's some st uh, staff activities and there's bonding and you can tell that employees have good relations and when employees feel positive about coming to work, they feel positive about the work that they're Absolutely. doing. And so, you know, getting back to you know my trip here and maybe some of my reasons i had the opportunity but i feel that there's an opportunity to grow my business and scale it up and i really wanted to feel confident about understanding what it was like as i said stepping into those people's world because if i'm going to take a risk and expand my business i want to make sure that halfway across the world those people are capable and i see that they're more than capable so that's really great and what about those concerns on data security? Uh, you know, honestly, as I said, I'm, I'm using, you know, very secure cloud-based applications. And if someone was in, the, in my office sitting in the chair next to me, I would have the, you know, exact same, same risk. situation, <laughs> same risk, right? Um, those software, you know, from a cloud-based perspective, they have uh, the authentication built in and um, with the onboarding process, just in terms of setting them up. and my team is set up and they can call the support people directly if they have some concerns and so 
that's great too, right? Because you know, sometimes there's always things yes. that are uh, happening from a technical perspective when there's upgrades to systems. And so they're not waiting on me to do something that they can do themselves. And, uh, and they have the authorization, you know, within their role to do that. And it would be the same thing if someone was sitting in the chair right next to me. And so honestly, um, I, I actually really appreciate it. And I'm, I'm perhaps, uh, I'm not if all, all accounting firms are there yet, because there are some opportunities when you're a newer firm, you don't have a lot of those old processes to do change management. Yes. So I typically don't have a lot of paper in my office and I was really pleased uh, when I came here to see that people are accustomed to working digitally and virtually. And I also really respect and appreciate the practices that you have put in place and you know the employees have shared with me in terms of just in terms of safeguarding clients' information. They don't have any paper, they don't record anything, they're not able to take data home. And so I have absolutely no concerns in terms of my clients' information being at a breach. Well, one thing that probably since first day or first year uh, when we started this business was that, the, we, you know, it may happen that client may not be happy with us because of probably the staff member not able to do the work. But we should not have any question on our intent and the trust. Sure, yeah. Because um, that was the first thing that we, when we started, uh, we are building this company for the team. We are building this company for the client. So let's, you know, let's just be the, the, the kind of, you know, essence of what we are trying to do. And that's where we thought that, you know, we have lockers and you check in, you get, get a visiting card as well. Yeah, sure. And every door you have, you know, you have to check in before you enter. So. Uh, these systems kind of not only kind of allows us to put some kind of you know balance and, and you know protects our data security it's important that when we write in a piece of paper while talking to clients that you know we follow this it's practically implemented mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's what we have been doing since about you know eight years in business nice. um, uh, I'll not take much of your time just last couple of questions sure. so uh, how do you see your from going from here, what would you, um, how would you like to grow from here? And, and how do you think offshoring would kind of help you there? Um, and then last, those firms out there who, who are on the fence, uh, what would you like to tell them? Yeah, sure. So, you know, as I mentioned to you, just in terms of the gra gradual process, it's somewhat uh, related to the different divisions that I have in my firm. So even though I'm a smaller firm, I have created a separate division and trade name for assurance work and taxation and separate for bookkeeping. And I have the employees set up that way. And so with this gradual approach uh, and, and also, you know, related to my visit here is I want to make sure the two people are really quite competent in terms of those two areas so that when it's time to turn the switch up and add more staff here, these people are more than capable that I can turn them more into supervisors oh. and have that layering approach within my firm, you know, across the ocean. And so I think that, uh, you know, and, and maybe it's, you know, j just myself, but uh, I, w I prefer to take a gradual approach because I wanted to make sure that my foundation was steady before yes. I, you know, move forward. In terms of firms that are hesitant, well, as you know, I often get calls from other people um, that are asking or that are that are interested, and uh, I, you know, I tell them all the same thing in terms of uh, we all face the same challenges with finding, you know, local skilled labor, uh, the amount of costs in terms of onboarding training, and as I mentioned to you about the uh, data analytical skills. Actually, that really exceeded my expectations in terms of being able to onboard people that were already well versed in the applications that I use that could rely on their peers in terms of maybe some better problem solving skills in terms of addressing my clients needs um, and also the ability to turn work around faster. As a small practitioner, I don't want to I don't want to be in a large firm and lots of times in the market that I'm in. Uh, accounting students they want to work for some of the big four and, and that's fine it's difficult you know to uh, not only attract those candidates but also to keep them not everybody wants to you know yeah. work for a small firm uh, except for the small firm <laughs> practitioner right and uh, and my clients do appreciate it I'll let you know that um, and so I think that if you really want to see your margins grow you have the opportunity to essentially work 24 hours a day but maintain that work-life balance because if you have good processes in place, the minute you turn off at the end of the day, when someone here across the, across the world is picking up your work, 
you're walking in the morning and uh, you're able to review the work and the client is willing to pay more money for work that is done at a higher quality and a fast turnaround time, you know? CRA may allow you six months to turn around your corporate tax return, but when you can turn that around to a client in a month, let me tell you, you're going to have that client for life. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that insight. And I think it's a great vision that you, the two staff member, I'd like to take the name Malik and Krithali are, yeah, are, are there. Um, they have done a wonderful job working with Amy. So uh, uh, I think what Amy uh, visualizes from here is as, as he expands, she'll make those two people as kind of seniors and kind of build team under, under them. So that's a great vision. I think it's a very long term approach that you have taken. And I think that's the way forward for small firms. And we are happy in a very small way. We are able to contribute this, to this, you know, small business economy. That's one of our cornerstone, uh, you know, when Integrity was formed, our objective was to uh, help, you know, a large firm has this access to global talent. Sure, yeah. But smaller firms, mid-sized firm doesn't have that. We are really happy that we are able to give that competitive advantage to the smaller firms so they can uh, be, you know, they can survive and grow and thrive in this competitive space of accounting. So, thank you, Amy. Thank you for joining in today and visiting our office. I hope uh, we took care of the hospitality and, and you like the place around. And uh, thank you, everyone. I hope uh, the conversation was insightful for you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to welcome me into your office. I really do appreciate that. Thank you.